In this video, we're going to give you a quick overview of the new third generation Smart Hub Smart Speed Control Unit. Firstly, just to give you a physical overview of the unit. On the front here, we have uh, the super bright LED displays. These are for use with the Smart Jump system when connected directly to Smart Hub. They're also used to show when an RFID scan has been uh, initiated on the gates. Across the front here, we then have three buttons. Uh, the first one, flash, will actually, pressing that will actually flash the lights of any gates that you have turned on in the area that are on the same channel as this hub. Secondly, we have the enter and scroll buttons, and these are used for changing the values of, of the, uh, the settings of the smart hub. So pressing enter once uh, will enter into the menu, pressing scroll will select the next option in the menu, and pressing enter again will select that option. This is only at this point used for changing the channel of the smart hub to join uh, other gates or your existing gates if you're an upgrading customer. Also on the front of the unit we have the power light. This will be blinking when the, light is, when the unit is turned on. And the charge light which will be on when the, the unit is charging. On the underside of the unit, starting from left to right, we have uh, two PS2 ports for connection of external devices. Port A is for connecting the smart jump jump mats. Port B is for connecting the smart scan RFID reader when in use with smart jump. Here we have the Bluetooth pairing button. We're not currently uh, using this, but we may choose to use it in future. Next we have the micro USB charging port used to charge the device with the provided charger. And next we have the power button. Power button can be used to turn the unit on, turn the unit off, and also holding the power button for 10 seconds will cause the unit to perform a full uh, reset. On the back of the unit then we have the uh, battery compartment. This can be used, it has a user replaceable battery. So in a few years time you will be able to replace the battery by opening that compartment. And of course then we have the wireless antenna which should be extended for all sessions except for when only connecting SmartJump directly to Smart Hub. Uh, one important note is to note the correct extension of the antenna so that you do not uh, cause any damage to it. You'll notice here a silver arrow on the back of the unit showing the correct direction to extend and put away the antenna. So to extend the antenna prior to a session, pull it out slightly, rotate in line with the arrows to the top, and that's the correct position for operation. At the end of the session, rotate the antenna counterclockwise back to its resting position on the back of the unit. Looking at the LCD screen, if you press the enter button, you will see in here a few variables. Firstly, the battery charge of the unit. You will also see the Bluetooth connection status, and then you will see the current channel and pan OD settings of the unit in case they need to be changed. The first time you use your um, Smart Hub control unit, you will need to pair it with your Android or Apple mobile device. The process for both operating systems is quite similar, and I will now show you on the iPhone 6. Firstly, you'll need to turn on Smart Hub so that the front screen shows the values and the power light is flashing. Then take your mobile device, and the first thing you'll need to do is pair Smart Hub with your mobile device. To do that, go into the settings area and find the Bluetooth settings app. The smart hub will appear in the other device list or new devices list, depending on your operating system. You will see it begin with the letters SS-SH. The following number will then match the serial number of your smart hub, which you can see on the front screen or by looking at the serial number sticker under the unit. To pair the unit, simply tap on it in the list. You will then receive a message asking you to pair the device. Tap that and at the same time you will notice a request on the Smart Hub itself to confirm the matching number. Press Enter on the Smart Hub and press Pair on your mobile device. You will now see that the device is connected. You are now ready to use the Smart Speed app and run a session. The SmartSpeed mobile app is available in the Apple iTunes Store and on Google Play. 
Once you have downloaded the app and connected your Smart Hub unit via Bluetooth, open the app. The first step will be to register your free account with SmartSpeed Online. SmartSpeed Online is where you'll be able to create team lists and edit player names, and also where you'll be able to download your results after testing. SmartSpeed Online is free for all customers and is a very convenient way to manage your data. The first thing you'll need to do is register an account. Uh, fill in the display name, your email, and your password to create your account. I already have an existing account, so I can now log in with that account. You should tick to remember the account so you do not have to log in again in future. Once you have logged in, you will see that the database will then synchronize and you are now ready to start testing. From the front screen, you can also access a number of settings, such as the general settings for the app, your previous results and your teams. Now that we've registered our account, we're ready to start testing. Note again that your Bluetooth should be connected before testing, and if it is not, you will see a red icon in the top right corner of the app screen. Turn on your Smart Speed or Smart Speed Light timing gates, and you are ready to test. Press Start Session, and you will be taken to the Setup screen. Smart Hub will automatically scan the area for any gates on your channel. Firstly, you can choose which team you are going to use for the testing, and these will come down from Smart Speed Online or can be created on the app. The app comes pre-installed with a preset team of 40 generic athletes. We can then go and choose the gate configuration for our session. In this case, we've scanned four gates, but we could actually therefore use one track of four gates, two tracks of two gates, or four tracks of one gate, depending on the protocol. From here, you can also flash your, your units, which will flash the LEDs on your smart speed or smart speed light units to show that they are turned on and set up correctly. We can also go to the status button and check the battery charge of those units and firmware version. Next, we can choose the drill that we want to run for the session. In this case, we're going to run a standard one-way timing drill for a four-gate sprint. We can then choose the basic running mode, whether we want to use the automatic mode to choose athletes in alphabetical order, manual mode where we choose athletes one by one and press go, or the RFID mode using Smart Scan. We can rename the session to be a specific name for downloading our results. And we are now ready to test. Next we'll be taken to the configuration screen again where we can check our batteries. But now we, can, we need to walk through our gates in the order that they will appear in the test from start to finished following the map. At the end of this the start button will appear and you are ready to then go to the next step. If you make a mistake, press the reset button and do it again. We'll now take into the user options and these can be different for each type of protocol. For instance, in this protocol, we can choose the start type from standard, in beam, or using a start pad. And now we're ready to test. As the athletes run through the gates, you will receive the results on the screen and the system is all now automated. Tapping this icon in the bottom right corner will allow you to change the visual mode from table mode to full scoreboard mode and in multiple lanes it will show you multiple scoreboards on the same screen. In the top right corner I can change the order of players and choose who is next. And in the top left corner I can go back in between settings, sessions, subsessions and change my settings. At the bottom down here I can pause. This is if I want to pause the session to go and change my settings. And then resume. I can also lock the screen so that if anyone is viewing the results, they can view the results without potentially pressing the wrong button. At the end of a session, when we finish testing, we press the stop button, and we now have three choices to view the current results, set up a new session, or start the same session again. If I go to results, we will then have a, a list of all of our results that we have collected, and can view those results. One thing you'll also notice is next to the results session, there will be a small cloud icon. If the icon is blue, this means the session has already successfully been uploaded to SmartSpeed Online. If it is red, the session has not yet been uploaded to SmartSpeed Online, and you will need to connect your device to the internet in order to do so. So this has been an overview of running a, your first session with Smart Hub and the SmartSpeed and SmartSpeed Lite systems. If you have any further questions, please watch our other videos or contact support at fusionsport.com.